Since I'd done my last video about the ZL equaliser, there have been a lot of updates and I've been asked if I would do a follow-up video. Now in particular, I've been asked if I would have a look at the EQ match function that we now have in the ZL equaliser. That's what we're doing today. So let's have our first example of this in action. I've got some drum overheads here. Let's have a listen. Now the kick in these drum overheads, instead of being in the centre of the stereo image, is pulling a little to the left. So let's solo up the left overhead. And you can hear, yes, there's a fair amount of kick in there. However, when we solo up the right overhead, there's not quite as much. So that's where our imbalance is coming from. And to fix this, we want our right overhead to sound more like our left overhead. So in this example, our left overhead is our target curve, also known as your reference curve. OK, so to fix this, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to set up a send from the left overhead to the right overhead. And we're going to send this to the side chain of the right overhead. In Reaper, of course, this means track channels 3 and 4. Now we open ZLEQ on our right overhead. First thing we need to do when we go in here is go up to the top right, to this little icon here, and we click that on, and that's our side chain turned on. OK, let's play. We're going to go to our Analyzer tab up here at the top. Go to where it says Medium, and go Frozen. So we've got two waveforms going on in here. This kind of pink one in the background, this is our side chain signal. And the other one is our main signal going through the plug-in. So the EQ match will analyse these two EQ curves and give us a difference curve. Go back, put this back on medium, and let's go into our match panel. So first of all, we have to tell the plug-in where our target curve is coming from. To do that, we go down here to where it says side. This is a menu. We've got a choice of three in here, which we'll get around to, but we're sticking with side because that's side chain. Below this, we have a control called weight. And this dictates how much or how little it listens to the loudest sections of the audio. OK, now all we have to do is press play and hit this triangle here to start learning the curve. It takes about 10 seconds or so for it to more or less settle down. Now we hit pause and stop playback. So now we have our new difference curve, so it's this blue one here. Now we can further refine our result. Let me show you. Over on the left hand side, white triangle, you can drag that over. And what this does is it tells the plugin to ignore anything below this point. Equally on the right hand side, we got another triangle here. Drag that in. And now this tells the plugin to ignore frequencies above this point. Down the bottom, we got a smooth control. So when you adjust this, you can make it less extreme or more extreme. We're going to hit Alt and click. That will reset it. Below this, we have a slope control. So we can use this to favor the high frequencies more or the low frequencies more. And this centers on 500 hertz. We've also got this diamond here in the middle. And we can use this to turn the whole thing up or down. So we're going to leave it more or less where it was. Now it's worth noting at this stage, you can't actually hear any difference. Let's have a quick listen. So now we need to do what's referred to as the curve fitting. We now go to yet another white triangle and click this. And as you can see, it does it pretty quickly. Now if we go down here, where it says num band, this tells you how many EQ bands it's used to recreate the new curve. Now in this case, it's done 12. It's probably more than what we really need, so we can adjust this, left click, hold and drag. 
And let's bring it down to, say, 8. I think that should do it. OK, we're all done in the match panel. So let's have a listen to the result. I'm going to bypass the plug-in first. Oh, it's quite a nice result, actually. That's worked rather well. Let's turn it off again. So, of course, you don't have to accept all the moves that it's given you. So, for instance, we got one down here, set at 21 hertz. This isn't really doing anything, so we can get rid of that one. We got a cut at about 34 hertz. Not really going to make that much difference to the result. So in other words, you can actually adjust it to suit your needs. Now let's look at creating and using presets. Now first, let's create a preset. So I've got this nice solid sounding kick. Let's open our EQ. Let's go match. And now we start learning the curve. OK, done. And this is our new curve. So we now go down to this little icon here. And this allows us to save it. And let's call it kick. OK, that's it, saved. We can now come out of here. Okay, so we got another kick here. And this is what we're going to use our preset on. Okay, let's open our EQ. Let's go and match. And let's open our preset. Kick. Go open. And there's a preset. So we're going to smooth this off a little. It's just a little bit extreme. Okay, something like that. And now we press Curve Fitting. Right, number of bands. Yeah, it's used as seven. OK, so we can close our match panel now. And this is our new curve. OK, so it's made it a little bit loud. So we go to our output. Let's bring the gain down a little. Let's hear it without it. It's quite a big difference. And again, you don't have to accept the exact result that it gives you. You can alter it to your own taste. OK, let's go back to the kick that we made our preset from. And let's go back into our match panel. We've already used side, we've already used preset, and now we're going to go for flat. So what exactly does this do? Well, let's play. And again, start the curve learning. OK, 10 seconds or so. Let's use our smooth control so we can see what's going on. And have a look at what we got. It looks a little bit odd, but what it's actually done is it's done an inverse curve. So where there's boosts in the original one, the new curve has cuts. You can see this is a cut here, and so it's a boost, and so on and so forth. OK, let's do the curve fitting. And let's come back out of the match panel. So what can you use this for? Well, you could copy this onto your bass track and use it as a starting point to help fit your kick and your bass together. Or if you've got two guitars in your song that are clashing, make an inverse curve from one and apply it to the other. And there you have it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.